Steve Forbes, Forbes Media Chairman. Steve, always great to see you. Good evening. Good, good, good to be with you, Jackie. Thank Look, you. When you break up this number, I mean, uh, we were expecting twice the amount of new jobs added to the economy than, than were added here. And President Biden talked about the average that we've seen over the last year. But the bottom line, as Edward points out, is that it's been very volatile, very rocky as a result of the administration's policies. And so I ask you this, you know, they're trying to say, look at the big picture. I'm looking at we're going into the holiday season and you're losing jobs in retail. It doesn't make sense. Uh, no, it doesn't. And they also overlook the fact that a lot of these supply chain problems have been made worse by what the administration has done, especially in the energy area, and not doing things that would ease those the supply chain problems by easing regulations such as truck drivers. I think you have to be 25 for long haul trucking. Why not lower the age to 21? You, after all, can join the Army at the age of 18, for crying out loud, and drive a tank at the age of 19 or 20. Why not a big truck? Mm. So things like that, little things like that add up. So they haven't done anything to uh, break up the supply chain problem. In fact, they've made them worse. And then you have this crazy vaccine thing, which the Supreme Court ultimately ruled unconstitutional, which has caused a lot of turmoil, kept a lot of people out of work in critical areas. So they've made a situation worse. If the government got out of the way, the situation would be better. Then we've got our friends at the Federal Reserve printing too much money, which is going to hit the economy next year and the year after. Yeah, these are all things on our radar that we need to keep watching. Um, but there was something else in this report that was troubling that Edward pointed out, which was wage growth. It actually ticked down month on month to 4.8%. And you look at consumer prices, the CPI, it's ticking up. It's well over 6%. And so you see these two things going in opposite directions, and you're thinking the math doesn't work here. Well, that's right. And that 4.8, is that pre-tax or after tax? Mm. People do have to pay taxes, payroll taxes. A lot of people still have to pay income taxes. So, uh, yeah, they have, are feeling falling behind. But to show the real strength of this economy, especially small businesses, if they remove these obstacles and they can hire people again wanting to move ahead, they have this household survey, which is very volatile month to month but measures new businesses, small businesses, more than the so-called uh, business survey they do. And that job count was up one million. Now that I say is very volatile, but it shows the small business sector is ready and raring to go. These people just get out of the way and let them do what they want to do, these small businesses. That is growing hire people. Yeah, Hello. I mean, they, they tell us all the time. They tell our reporters they are ready to go and they want to be back at it. They want to get their staffs back into action. But there are so many problems facing them right now, Steve. You know, they have to pay these higher wages. They've got to deal um, with the rules and regulations and the volatility that comes out every time we see a new variant. You know, you look at where we were when it comes to the labor force. Um, Three and a half percent unemployment in February of 2020 it was a 50 year low. And you say to yourself, we've had vaccines, we've had treatments, we've lived with this virus. Why aren't we back there yet? Well, the problem is, one, the uh, supply chain problems caused when you shut down the global economy, a little more complicated than a lot of these people realize. The other thing is, in Europe, is still in lockdown mode, which we know medically does not work, very destructive on all fronts, yet they're going into it again. Germany may still do it. We know other countries are doing it, so that's going to make the supply chain problem worse. And the government is making things worse in terms of this country yeah. by piling on, wanting to pile on taxes and regulations and the like. So again, the government would do less, they'd do more. I think what the markets really fear, what people fear, is not so much this new variant, it's, un it's not good, but it doesn't seem to be as nearly as ghastly as the earlier variants were. The real fear is what government's going to be doing responsive, in response <laughs> right. to this variant. Yeah, they we just haven't... love to put on the regulations and controls. And, they can't leave us alone. And we haven't even talked about the Build Back P Better plan, 